and a very warm welcome back to Hughes Nursery and in today's video we're going to be looking at not only at how to identify canker but also how to remove it effectively. So about four years ago I actually filmed my dad doing a canker tutorial and that's had nearly 70,000 views so I know there's interest and I've been on YouTube and I've tried to find other videos to do with removing apple canker and I was quite unsuccessful so I thought I'd do another one where we would look at how to first identify it and then we'll be looking at the simple ways of how to prevent it but if you have a lot of canker then you might want to check out the old video obviously the recording quality isn't as good but the information and value is in there for you so i hope you enjoy what we're looking at here is a tree that you may recognize from an earlier video uh, basically we had apple canker right in the join of the fork of this tree not the best place to have it and I actually chiseled it out so it's actually healed over really nicely so what we're doing here we're sort of revisiting this tree because we'll have a quick look around it and there are places where canker is reappear reappearing but basically i'm going to show you that we can live with apple canker as long as we keep on top of it so we're not going to cut the tree out we're not going to kill it cut it down we're going to live with apple canker. Okay, the first thing we need to think about is what tools we need for this job. So it's quite handy to have them in holsters so that they're easy to access. This is a pruning knife. And this is for scraping off canker around uh, a lesion on bark. Good pair of secateurs. And a really good pruning saw. This is a silky gum taro. I think it's probably the best one and it stays nice and sharp. The reason I have a glove is it's really useful to protect your glove hand because the saw is so sharp. If it bounces off, I've got the protection. Now, all of these, between, when we're moving between trees, we don't want to spread infection. So I have a little pot of milk here, which has um, antibacterial properties, and canker is an airborne fungus. So every time I go to a different tree, I need to wipe my blade with some, some milk. Okay, and again, in terms of uh, recognizing apple canker, um, you can see the little red fruiting body that shows the canker still active here and it's important to remove it. And all the branches and little bits that you get, um, it's important to grab them all, pull them together and burn them as quickly as possible because it's an airborne fungus. So, and it loves damp weather. So the next time it's damp, these will be sending out spores and trying to infect other trees. So you want to get rid of it, burn it. That's the really important thing. So what we need to do is have a good look around the tree to see if we've got any canker in it. And having looked on this branch here, we can see this discoloration yeah, it doesn't look very healthy at all. So basically, for removal of a, of a tip like this, we want to go to the, rather than just thinking, oh, we'll cut it here, because that might um, get rid of it. So you could do that and say, have a look, it's clean, that's fine. But if we do that, we'll stimulate a bud here and it's better to, to produce, to get it. So this becomes the new leader. So it's always better to take it back to uh, an emerging branch than just cut randomly in the middle because you'll, you'll stimulate other growth. So we've cut this um, the way we want to. Uh, there's no sign of canker left because it's all green. If you've got any brown in it, we'll, we'll show you that on a later one. You need to cut further in, but you always have to track back on a branch that has canker because there's chances are that it's appeared somewhere else. So if we follow this back along here, there's a very nasty looking lesion on the tree just here. So we need to remove that. So I'm going to cut this closer than I normally would just to see if the wood is clean behind it to make the, the point. Okay, so you see that is, that's clean, so that's okay. But what we've done here is we've cut back to a fruiting spur. So the tree will try to, to get another bud going so we can, we can control that by choosing which bud we want to have. So there's actually a, a dormant bud a bit further behind. And I'm actually going to do a slanting cut to there. 
and then the, the tree's energy will be put into this bud growing from here. We're also looking at fruiting buds because sometimes um, canker can be attracted there. You can see it here. This bud is possibly all right. What I'm going to take it back to is actually a, a dormant bud. So the fruiting buds are the ones that sort of look a bit fluffy and they stick out. And the dormant buds is this, this little lump sticking there. If I cut that at an angle there to, to, to shed the uh, rainwater there, this one will actually grow from here. And again, we're looking for clean green. We've got the clean green there, so we know we've got rid of the canker. Just behind it, we've got a fruiting spur that's not looking very happy. I'm gonna cut this all the way back to the branch and hopefully, again, have clean green wood. Actually tidy that up a little bit more because there's a little bit of brown there. It's okay, but I think I'll just try and get rid of that. So, on this branch, we've actually got the fruiting spur has got canker and it's gone down lower than we can cut with the secateur. So I know if I cut that there, we still have unhealthy looking wood there. So this is where my saw comes in. And I'm gonna cut a little bit of a V notch into here. Now again, if you didn't need this branch, if you have got canker, it's always better to, to cut the whole branch off, but this is quite an important one. So I wanna try and keep it. So, so if I cut, underneath it that way and then just so I don't make the hole too big and then I come back from this way and I'm going back to clean green wood again okay again we've spotted another bit here is looking quite nasty and again we've got a, a bit of an upward branch coming here I don't actually need it because I've got this one but again just to see what happens if what we'd be ideally doing is cutting this at an angle If you can see in there, we've got the brown in there, that's still showing signs of infection, as I suspected. So we've not cut back far enough on this one. So we're gonna have to look for another place along the branch. Remember, we've got a fruiting bud there, and then a little lump there is a dormant bud, there's a dormant bud there. If we cut to an upward facing bud, it'll come up like that. If we go to a, a downward facing bud, it'll come out like that. So this, here we don't really want it to go up because there's traffic there's a lot of congestion so i need to find a dormant bud underneath which is just here again cut at a, an angle away from the bud and we're looking we've still got some brown still no good so we have to track back again look for the next bud that might be a candidate and i've got one just here underneath We'll do a close-up of that after I've cut this bit off so you can see what it looks like. So I'm cutting again there. Unfortunately, it's still got the canker. So this was the, that's the dormant bud. Yeah, and it's quite different from a fruiting bud which sticks out. So it's still traveling back. So I'm looking for a, another bud. one should be okay hopefully this is sort of this should come out like that let's see if we can get clean wood here still got brown bit in so I've got to this is the way it works you just keep tracking back and we finally have clean and green so that's the process you follow it back until you get clean and green. And that's the way that you can live with apple canker. Due to canker being an airborne fungus, the best thing that you need to do is when you cut off the infected parts off your apple trees, you want to put them straight into a plastic bag and then you can either burn it or throw it away as rubbish because you don't want those bits which are infected lying on the ground of your orchard because they're airborne they can then spread to other trees so thank you very much for watching this video i hope you found it informative but if you have any further questions to do with canker or anything to do with growing your own apple trees then don't hesitate to ask down below in the comments or you can simply ask me on snapchat that's more of a 
direct way that I'm trying to speak to you guys and I think it's a really fun and exciting way to either share advice and things like that. So thank you once again for watching. Don't forget to like and stay subscribed and stay tuned for a video coming soon.